welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Aggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. This is the second half of the conversation with uh, Elpida. Listen to the previous episode, number 90, for the, the first part. Elpida, shall we talk uh, about uh, choices? You mentioned it earlier and you say that it's uh, the biggest distinction that you've had in your own journey and uh, working with others, coaching others. So do you want to explain that to me? First of all, when you say choices or lack of choices, what is it that that you mean? How how is that the, made a big distinction for you? Let's start sure. from there. Um, choices is such or can be such a huge topic because it applies to everything in our lives and it i think the biggest distinction is that we have choices that everything is a choice even when we think we don't have a choice we have choices Mm -hmm. we may not have the choices that we want and very often we focus on what we can't have and there has been a heck of a lot of that this year people focusing on what they cannot do and that can really that does something to you Mm -hmm. if you're not happy where you are and you feel you absolutely cannot do anything about it um it does something to you and i know that because i've i've been to that place a number of times in my life and some people meet their needs this way. And we can talk about Tony Robbins and the six human needs another time, but some people meet their needs this way and by, by feeling helpless, by staying in the pain. And that's a different topic. Mm-hmm. But if you are not happy with that, realizing that you have choices. And, you know, after a certain point in our lives, when we stop being in diapers and, and maybe we graduate from school, you got to put your big person pants on and realize, you know, this is life. Mm-hmm. It's not always going to be rainbows and sprinkles. And, and sometimes you have choices that may not be your first or second choice, but that's life. And so how can you um, work with what you have? And I'm, none of us is immune to that. And I'm not immune to that. The first couple of months of the pandemic, I, as choices kept being removed from my life, um, I was not a happy camper. And then I said, okay, what can I do? What options are available to me? And that's when the shift happens. Mm-hmm. And it, it, again, it, it's, you can take any of, of these sort of, I wouldn't even call them advice, concepts, um, in a vacuum but for me it's it's a progression because i have um i've worked very hard the last eight or nine years to be able to be happy most of the time Mm -hmm. and i've worked hard in really asking myself on the toughest moments where's the blessing in this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's not an easy question it's an easy question when you're getting married. Where's the blessing in this? It's an easy question when you have a child and when you get a puppy or when you're out celebrating a birthday with friends. It's not an easy question when you lose your father. And that's when I started adopting it and it started becoming part of my life. Because my brain said, what do you mean was the blessing in this? You just lost your father. Um, and... I said, no, where's the blessing in this? And the beauty about our brain is whatever question you ask it, Mm -hmm. and there's a choice in the question, Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. See what I did there? There's a choice in the question. Um, whatever question you ask your brain, it's going to come up with answers. Mm-hmm. If you ask your brain, why am I alone? It says, sit back. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you exactly what's wrong with you. And, you know, five days later, it's still going. But if you ask yourself, where's the blessing in this? Mm-hmm. Like if I ask myself, why did my father have to die? Oh, my God, massive pain in any way you can answer that. If I ask myself, where's the blessing in this? I start coming up with answers like, um, you know, an amazing life, a legacy of an extraordinary man came to its natural end and and Mm -hmm. the legacy he leaves behind. Mm -hmm. And then my question was, how can I honor his legacy? And there were some powerful questions and answers there. But choices in, in everything you do, you just don't realize it. And I'm not saying invest your time in making cautious choices every day of your life, every moment of your life. But there is a huge benefit and a blessing in realizing that what you're doing was a result because at some point you made a choice. Mm -hmm. Anything by setting up your alarm in the morning or choosing to snooze, your morning routine or rituals, what you eat, how you invest, spend, waste your time, how, um, what you focus on, Mm -hmm. what you tell yourself about yourself, what you choose to see in others, what you choose to speak about others. Mm -hmm. And very important, what you choose to expose yourself to in terms of content. Do you spend three hours a day on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter and God knows what else is out there these days? I stopped watching the news years ago. Mm -hmm. I read headlines and I'm not even crazy about the headlines I'm reading these days because I know I can see that the way they report the facts is... already has some kind of a judgment or, or is, is designed to make me have a reaction. Mm-hmm. I, I know enough about what's going on through the, the world, so I don't live in La La Land, but I've, I don't watch the news. Because no judgment necessarily, but when you have news channels that their only objective is to report news 24-7, like, come on, there's not enough stuff and when you have an industry that lives by the motto if it bleeds it leads Mm -hmm. then there's a reason why we don't hear about people doing good in the world about people being neighborly and helping each other what you allow in your brain and in your mind and in your psyche and in your soul and in your heart really is a choice Mm-hmm. and impacts who you are and who you're becoming as a human being. Mm-hmm. And so once you realize that, you can dream of a different person you want to be and then slowly make different choices. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. Elvita, I have a question that comes up from what you say. I, I, I completely get it. But the mm-hmm. thing is that for many people, if not for most these choices are not even aware that they are making choices because they happen automatically over period over long spe- long periods of time so they are not even aware that they are mm-hmm. they have a choice so if you were to advise someone that is listening to this and say oh i hadn't thought of it in such a way and you were to give him some kind of an action or a step to to take it uh, to take it forward or further what would you say well first of all i would say that's where i come in with my coaching <laughs> <laughs> um and and literally that's that's where i come in i'm i'm not this super duper fabulous guru that can wave a magic wand and make ha- magic happen in people's lives i hold up a mirror And I've been doing that long enough to know and 
and appreciate and identify language patterns, mm -hmm. behavior patterns, and then very gently ask a question that brings awareness for the person. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that in the sense that I, I start by not judging the person and, and only wanting what's best for them. And I'm like, have you noticed that? Could that be linked to that, what you're feeling? Let's do something about it. But if, if, if someone doesn't want to work with a coach or someone cannot afford a coach or doesn't have a coach and doesn't believe in coaching, for me, what I've learned to trust is, for lack of a better word, a gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think in today's age, with all the physical stimuli, we forget that we can tap into this energy that is not concrete, something you can touch and, and feel, but you can feel it in your heart. You can mm -hmm. feel it in your gut. Mm -hmm. And that I've learned to trust. So if, if something is not feeling right, if there's an unrest, I dig until I find answers, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, anything from making a decision about who to hang out with or who to talk to or a project I'm working on, some of the choices I'm making in my life. I go back to choices, which makes it deliberate. But once you start realizing, and I think the foundation is you have to believe that you have choices and that where you are today is the result of choices. Because mm -hmm. that changes your mindset from um, a learned helplessness to being at the driver's seat. And then the rest of it is, okay, if I'm not happy with my body, what are the choices I'm making? every day that could be contributing to that. And once you identify a choice in one area of your life, you can identify another choice. Mm -hmm. Like if I have three cookies with my midday coffee, and I've always had three cookies with my midday coffee. So it's no longer a choice. It's, it's part of my habit. Once you realize that that is a choice, can I have two cookies instead? Can I skip half the sugar I'm putting in my coffee? Mm -hmm. There are people that are like gung ho. I'm going to change my life tomorrow. hundred percent. Boom. They get it done. God bless them. I'm not like that. I'm all about what Tony Robbins calls the two millimeter shift. And if you stack those over the course of a year, over the course of your life, you can have a completely different trajectory and end up in a completely different place than where you are today. Mm -hmm. And I've applied that in my life. Um, and I know it works because I would never ask someone to do something that I haven't done myself. I would never ask someone to walk a path that I haven't walked myself. And I'm so passionate about choices because over the last, it's been almost two years now, I made some very deliberate different choices about my life and my health. And last year I was able to release 40 pounds. Whereas before I had a belief that I can't lose weight. Mm -hmm. I've been told I am curvy because I'm Mediterranean. I should just accept it. I've been told that I'm big boned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been told that that's just the way it is. And, and I've accepted it. I can't lose weight. And, uh, you know, as I start peeling the layers of what I believe, I'm like, hold on. There are people who drop weight like that. What do you mean I can't lose weight? So once you change the belief, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, what do I need to do? What choices do I need to do? And it started with little choices every day that I knew I wanted to make part of a different lifestyle. Most people I hear have been putting on weight in the pandemic. I have not. Because I make different choices every day in my life and I have a different lifestyle that is sustainable, mm -hmm. which is why I like those two millimeter shifts, a choice at a time, choice a day, choice a week, next week, add a little bit more, add a little bit more. It adds up. Absolutely. And, you know, I'll, I'll 
I'll make a comment with what you said about the com uh, the choices, uh, which is <clears throat> borrowed from from the the Stoic uh, the, the Stoic philosophers of uh, ancient Greece and and Rome and our choice uh, if you really think about it is the only thing the one thing that we are completely in control of we we have no control about anything else in our life not even our body or nothing at all but our choice to use a reason to respond in any given situation or uh, stimulus or whatever it is one way or the other and that, that is always ours no matter what happens no matter if the world is coming to an end we do have the choice so uh, it's a it's a it's a, a topic that could be a little bit uh, weird for some people who are not very familiar with it but uh, i think it's important to to realize that what you will think what you will choose is always up to you no matter what the external circumstances might be and mm -hmm. uh, the questions that you said I, I love the questions that you said earlier the, the, to ask first of all what if what if there is an, another option and then once there is that possibility then how will mm -hmm. give you answers yeah. and yeah. if you can't figure it out who can give you answers yeah And there is, there is, talking about choices, I want to I wanna raise it up a level. Because um, talking about choices and the choices we have is fine and dandy. And, and some people say, well, you know, I don't want to make a different choice. Um, choices have consequences. The choices we make every day have consequences. Mm -hmm. And so for me that is that was a huge realization and that's something that i often tell people choices have consequences if you choose not to change that has a consequence like that drives accountability through the roof don't tell me you can't lose weight because you're making specific choices and you know first i, I had to tell that to myself choices have consequences mm -hmm. and so It is very important when you're making deliberate choices to be ready to accept the consequences. That's what adulthood is about. And it's not very common. There are, well, you know, there are people who just refuse it and say, no, I still want to be able to drink and eat like I was in my 20s and I, I don't want to put in 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. I, you know, you, you look and we're talking about weight because that's my biggest example these days because of the transformation that I went through, something that three years ago, I, I would have not thought it was possible. Mm -hmm. Like even now I tell it, I'm like, 40 freaking pounds. <laughs> <laughs> like I would have never, I mean, there, it, it just was, was that's, That's the way that I've carried on my entire adult life. But choices have consequences. Who, again, going back to who you choose to spend time with has consequences. There are always trade-offs. Do you choose to spend time with the people that you've always spent time with, although you realize that Their approach to life, the conversations you're having are really not helping you grow and move forward. Mm -hmm. That has a consequence. Or do you choose to elegantly bless them out of your life so you can attract a different peer group that will support you in your next phase of your life? Choices have consequences. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was very sobering. And for a lot of people, um, it's, it's a sobering concept. And that's a very deliberate word that I'm using because I know that sometimes the word consequences has more of a negative connotation than a positive. Because I could say choices bring results. For me, as we were talking about connotations earlier in the language, for me, that's a little bit of a blah statement. Mm -hmm. But consequences makes me sober up and say, okay, what is my choice on every single moment? 
and uh, we also must consider the, the consequences in the depth of, of time because the, the consequences uh, of a choice could be very small uh, immediately or the next day but the same choice uh, over a period of time compounds and it mm-hmm. can compound completely against you so that you gave that example about the, the three cookies so if you eat three cookies today you won't gain weight tomorrow and if mm-hmm. you do that again tomorrow you won't gain weight but do that over 10 years and see what happens so it uh, and it is something that I believe very important to realize that the consequences are not immediate mm-hmm. and the longer we carry on with a choice that is uh, not to our benefit or not serving us, it's going to intensify, amplify in the future. So, And of course that can work for us as well if we make the right choices. If we go to the gym, I'm not going to be fit tomorrow, but if I keep on going, keep on going, in a period of time, I will see the the, the results. So, yeah. Mm. Um, Elpida, there is just uh, there is one other thing I wanted to uh, ask, and then I will uh, wrap things up. And uh, it is something that is uh, I've, I personally find very fascinating about you because you say you've uh, been to over forty countries in the world even though it was for business you still have uh, been so can you share a bit of that experience of uh, I think I read somewhere the the phrase uh, world citizen which uh, I like I don't know if it's going to be feasible feasible from now on uh, with the travel restrictions Mm -hmm. but uh, can you share a bit of that uh, experience or any key learnings that this has uh, given you yeah um i credit my desire to travel Mm -hmm. Uh, i credit my parents for that Mm -hmm. Um, my father definitely enjoyed the traveling and my mother did too my mother when she was in her early 30s um, moved to moscow to work for the greek embassy there Mm -hmm. and we're talking iron curtain moscow for a young woman in the 1960s um, and you probably understand what the environment and the culture was about. Like, you probably were expected by then to have a husband and a couple of kids, not move on your own yeah. to communist Moscow. So uh, there, there's something there that probably has been passed on uh, in the genes. But um, I've always um, felt that I wanted to travel. I found mm-hmm. it very exciting, very appealing. And my, my, my graduate degree was in international management. So there was an, an understanding that I would apply business concepts with the added complexity of doing business in another country. And back then I thought I would do that in Europe and life brought me to Puerto Rico, working for an international, for, for a big American company with international uh, presence. And out of Puerto Rico, they manage the Caribbean, Central and South America. So I spent 10 years traveling um, about 60, 70 percent of the time. Mm -hmm. And I was younger and that was exactly the moment in my life to do that. Um, No commitment. So I was able to just leave out of a suitcase. And there's a movie with George Clooney. I think it's called Up in the Air, right? That he was a frequent traveler and and some of the things in that movie are completely related to like okay. how um reaching a whatever status in an airline was important and me and my colleagues were comparing how many miles we each had each year and who made <laughs> platinum first and who made executive platinum and priding in uh, knowing the concierge in every hotel in every country um it was a different time. That was 20 years ago. Um, the things that are important to me now have clearly changed, but the experiences stay mm-hmm. because although a lot of those trips, the majority were for business, I was able to appreciate 
people coming from different cultures yeah and have an an open mind of how different people live their lives what is important to them um their food their music um visit some monuments bring back some cool things that remind me of those trips yeah um i still i think i still have a list of places that i want to travel and i want to pick up traveling for recreational purposes mm -hmm. um, starting next year or the year after that um not as eager to boast about a number anymore but more about experiences let's say less quantity more quality <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh, I, i'm with you uh, with uh, on that absolutely um elpida um it's been a really fascinating uh, conversation with you and we went through all sorts of different uh, routes. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to also ask you some uh, quick fire questions, which I always ask. Uh, okay. My guests. So you don't have fire to answer. Away. You don't have to answer in one word, but uh, it's just uh, uh, some questions that I always find intriguing to see differences and similarities that uh, different people uh, give me. So mm -hmm. uh, the first one is: What does the term personal development mean to you? Lifelong journey. <laughs> okay, that's quick fire, all right? <laughs> that's quick fire. <laughs> that's I mean, fine. So, I, I... Um, and let's say you could go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self and you could give her one piece of advice. What would that be? Life is happening for you, not to you. Mm-hmm. As, as someone who, who we know says. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell me, if you had a, a magic wand and you could wave it and change something in the world as it is today, what would you change? Help people appreciate each other more. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit on that? I think we focus too much. I think we live in a culture that focuses on what's wrong, what's mm -hmm. missing, what's mm -hmm. out of our control. Mm -hmm. Who can we blame? Mm -hmm. um, we're focusing on what divides us. And if in every interaction with every human being, especially the ones that trigger us, we asked ourselves the question, what are three things I can appreciate about this person right now. Full stop. And then move on. Or if you don't want to move on, tell them one of the things that you appreciate about them. And I'm not just repeating stuff I've learned and heard. I've done that. I'm, I'm the president of the board of my homeowners association. I've been doing that for 11 years. I've been the president for 10. That's not a position that always makes me very popular. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've had people scream at me. I have people call me names and reacting is very easy. It's what we do this you now. No, you did this. You did that. No, look at you. Well, you do this. And with the people that um, were more vocal about their dislike about me, I forced myself to say, what are three things I can appreciate about this person right now? I don't have to love them. I don't have to be lifelong friends with them. And let me tell you, changing the energy on my part changes the interaction. So yeah, if I had a magic wand, I would help people appreciate each other more and not just those that they like. Thank you. I, I think that this is a complete life changer. Uh, mm -hmm. If force, uh, The way you said it, forcing yourself to, to, to find three things or to answer about three things that you can appreciate, uh, it would change the dynamic in in every relationship, mm -hmm. really. And not even just the adverse relationship, even... Uh, um, 
Is there anything that you were hoping that we would discuss about today and we completely missed it? I mean, I could say yes and no, right? Um, <laughs> That's why I'm um, asking. <laughs> we can talk another time about my dogs and agility and all the lessons that I bring home to life from that because there's mm. so many lessons as, as you're trying to develop a trust with an animal uh, that um, it will follow you around off leash and do things mm -hmm. that are fun. And when you guys fail as a team, it's always the human's fault. Mm -hmm. It's never the dog's fault. So learning to yeah, be accountable for your actions and your choices, because choices have consequences. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, that's that. There's more to come. I'm just not going to give everything away. <laughs> sure. Uh, but I want you to give this away, though. Emerging from this conversation that we had, if you were to give to the listener one actionable item, something that they can implement so that they can make a, maybe a two millimeter shift, as you were saying earlier in their life, what would you uh, tell them? Well, I just think uh, there's another thing we didn't talk about. <laughs> um, I would tell them, start every day with gratitude. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, increase the gratitude. I start every day. I, I have a gratitude practice that I do when I jog with my dogs in the morning. Then after my breakfast, I write down 10 things I'm grateful about and why. I repeat my gratitude practice when I walk my dogs in the afternoon. It's a way of life because mm -hmm. the thing is that where focus goes, energy flows. So the more things you find to be grateful for, and you can find things to be grateful in any circumstance, even if it's just the air that you breathe. Uh, the more things you find to be grateful for, the more things you will have to be grateful for. Absolutely. And, you know, the reason that I asked you this question is that it's, it's part of what I, I want to do with uh, this podcast. It's not about, you know, people having conversations. I mean, it can be as intriguing as it can, which is great. But for me, what I want to really uh, give to the listener is some bit of action, some bit of mm -hmm. a deed, something that they can implement really to to improve their life. Otherwise, you can listen. There is so much information out there. There is, uh, uh, again, I will quote uh, Tony, who said that we, we uh, how did he say that we, uh, there is a, um, ah, I, don't, I don't remember, and I don't want to mess, uh, to mess the quote up, but he was saying that we, we drown in um, knowledge, but we starve in wisdom. So th there is a, a distinction between, there is all the knowledge uh, in the world it's out there but to distill that and do something with it i think that is the the very important thing yeah can you tell us how can people connect with you and find out more about uh, about you and what you do people can find me on facebook mm -hmm. very simple alpida francescaro given I'm, my I'm unique right. last name <laughs> i don't think that there is a lot more um i it's it's my personal page i i accept friend requests especially if people send me a message and they tell me who they are and mm -hmm. why they want to connect if yeah. someone wants to have a conversation they can private message me i try to again talking about choices i try to post something motivational inspiring something that resonates with me a couple of times a week mm -hmm. so these days my page is more about where my mind is at and how I can support others and less about what's going on in the world other than we can make that work for us. That's brilliant. Thank you again very much for uh, your time and the conversation and uh, some amazing uh, pieces of value that I believe that you shared. Um, I want to wish you all the very best with your life, with your career, with your progression. I don't know what your plans are about uh, the uh, Tony Robbins in, in the mm -hmm. future, uh, but uh, all, my, all the very best with that. Um, any 
parting words? Just um, deep gratitude and appreciation for, for inviting me. Uh, I've really enjoyed our conversation and I appreciate the questions you're asking. And to you and anybody who's listening, have an amazing 2021. Make the most of it. Choose carefully your choices and have an extraordinary life. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and rate Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts and also share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to become part of an exclusive community, gain access to unique content and at the same time support this podcast, then become my patron. The link is in the show notes or you can type bit.ly slash pdmpat. If you want to know more about what I do and how I can help you, join my Facebook group, Personal Development Mastery. Again, the link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdmgroup. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 